Hello and welcome everybody. Today we have with us Dr. Duarte to talk about his most recent book, Fundamentals of Quantum Entanglement, second edition. F.J. Duarte is a Chilean-born laser physicist and quantum physicist resident in the United States. His research on lasers and optical physics has been widely applied in numerous fields from astronomy to nanophotonics. Dr. Duarte has practiced physics in the academic, industrial and defense sectors. He is the author of numerous papers, patents and some 16 laser optics and quantum optics books. His book titles are held at some 5,000 libraries worldwide. He was elected Fellow of the Australian Institute of Physics in 1987 and Fellow of the Optical Society of America in 1993. Dr. Duarte has received the Engineering Excellent Award and the David Richardson Medal from the Optical Society. Welcome and thank you for being with us. Dr. Duarte, how does the second edition of Fundamentals of Quantum Entanglement differ from the first edition? Oh, thank you, um, Asara, for uh, that introduction. And um, the differences uh, between the two books are uh, uh, quite uh, noticeable. Um, we have that the uh, second edition of uh, Fundamental of Quantum Entanglement um, is uh, about uh, 308 pages. That is, it's about 25% uh, larger than the first edition. Um, it also, for the first time, it includes problems, about 120 uh, problems. It has a, a new chapter on the um, a matrix, matrix treatment of quantum entanglement and a new chapter on matrix uh, mechanics. It also includes a, a new chapter on, on the very important um, issue of probability amplitudes, which are uh, crucial for the correct description of quantum entanglement. Um, it also uh, has an enlarged uh, sh uh, chapter on the uh, discussion on the interpretation of quantum mechanics. <clears throat> Fundamentals of quantum entanglement, second edition, emphasize an interferometric approach and a matrix approach to quantum entanglement. What are the advantages of these approaches? Um, well, the interferometric approach, which is what um, the first edition was based, is, is very important to describe the physics of quantum entanglement. That is, the physics is described from the um, Dirac uh, Feynman interferometric uh, principle. And so that describes the physics. What we have done now uh, in this second uh, book is we have inter incorporated some new developments on matrix, um, on the matrix description of quantum entanglement, which enable us to get the, the ferrometric physics into a matrix language, which makes the whole um, treatment uh, a lot more of, um, uh, fluid, smooths the the, the mathematical um, uh, difficulties and it it makes it uh, possible to um, link quantum mechanics very easily with the uh, matrix description of optical uh, components uh, such as beam splitters, interferometers, um, uh, polarization rotators, which are used in the experimental side of quantum entanglement. In Fundamentals of Quantum Entanglement, second edition, there is a whole chapter dedicated to Bell's theorem, and Bell's theorem is also discussed in the chapter on interpretations. Can you explain why Bell's theorem is so important? Yes, <clears throat> Bell's theorem is important uh, from a philosophical and a historical perspective, very important. Um, following the EPR paper, uh, in 1935, where it was um, stated that quantum mechanics was an incomplete theory, 
uh, people began to search for um, hidden variable theories which would fill that uh, gap. And so uh, even though that in 1932, von Neumann had already uh, proclaimed that uh, hidden variable theories were incompatible quant with quantum mechanics, um, it was not until the introduction of Bell the theorem in 1964 that a, a, an important uh, section of the physics community finally accepted that uh, those hidden variable theories uh, were incompatible uh, with um, quantum mechanics. How is Bell's theorem related to the EPR paradox? Yes, uh, the EP, in the EPR paradox paper, um, even though um, Einstein did not say EPR paradox, the EPR paradox was a terminology introduced by Bonn in the 1950s. Um, it was uh, hinted that there would be these um, uh, finer theories which would uh, be an improvement on quantum mechanics. Mechanics. So the, the Bell theorem um, uh, provided uh, a set of inequalities which would uh, test for for these for these um, um, hidden variable theories. So it it spur it it encourage uh, a series of very important experiments. Uh, in particular, the aspect experiments, which did um, uh, demonstrate that um, uh, quantum, that the experimental results did agree with, with quantum uh, mechanics, and they were not bound uh, within the inequalities um, uh, related to the hidden variable theories. <clears throat> How is Bell's theorem related to the physics of quantum entanglement? This is this is um, extremely important, and for the fact that the the, the Bell theorem, uh, as I said initially is important from a historical and philosophical perspective, but not from a physics perspective related to quantum entanglement. That is to say that the derivation of the probability amplitude of quantum entanglement is completely and utterly independent from Bell theorems. That is, you do not need Bell theorem to um, derive the physics of uh, quantum entanglement. Many physicists refer to the measurement problem in quantum mechanics. Can you explain how this is treated in Fundamentals of Quantum Entanglement, second edition? Yes, um, the, um, uh, the measurement problem uh, is, is, uh, is another very interesting issue because in practice, uh, in praxis or, or from a pragmatic perspective, there is, no inter, uh, there is no measurement problem in quantum mechanics. Uh, for instance, the interferometrics predictions um, agree perfectly with um, experimental data. And in quantum electrodynamics, for instance, uh, the prediction made by Peterman in 1956 predicts uh, agree to the seventh decimal place with measurements done in 2008. And, and even though Peterman only used two Feynman diagrams, now they use uh, computer uh, calculations to include far, far more Feynman diagrams, and the agreement is, goes even further uh, into the ninth uh, decimal place and even better. Uh, um, so in practice, there is no measurement problem. Uh, there is no measurement that disagrees with quantum mechanics, or however, um, there is a conceptual difficulty. It is a concept, conceptual difficulty um, that leads some people to advocate that there is a measurement problem. Uh, what we do in fundamentals 
uh, for quantum entanglement second edition is we show that uh, from an interfer interferometric perspective and from a quantum entanglement perspective, the um, so-called collapse of the wave function is completely unnecessary. Uh, you go from the um, superposition probability amplitudes to the um, calculated probability uh, directly and uh, the so-called uh, collapse of the wave function would have brought in an extra uh, mathematical step, which is unnecessary. Um, so from an interferometric perspective and a quantum entanglement perspective, there is no measurement problem in quantum mechanics. Fundamentals of quantum entanglement, second edition, emphasize the non-locality of the photon. Can you explain why this is important? Yes, uh, the uh, non-locality of the photon is uh, uh, very important uh, to avoid misunderstandings and conundrums. Um, the uh, the non-locality of the photon was first uh, hinted to by Dirac in 1947, and Willis Lamb emphasized it uh, rather um, uh, bluntly in 1991, when he said that the photon is not a particle, no matter how you treat it mathematically. Uh, what's, what's important is to consider uh, the photon as a coherent uh, form of energy with non-local properties. Um, the way to uh, think about it is, let's say, considering two experimental uh, setups. The first is the uh, n-slit in interferometer. If one uses one photon to do n-slit interferometry, then that single photon illuminates the whole array <clears throat> of slits, uh, be it two slits or 2,000 slits. And the same applies if we have an ensemble <clears throat> of, uh, of uh, uh, indistinguishable photons. Um, the, the second uh, uh, experimental setup uh, refers to the Matsenda interferometer, that is to the measurement of line width of with Matsenda interferometer. And it is linked to Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Uh, if one um, is to measure the line width of a very narrow line with laser, then one needs a very large interferometer uh, because the coherence of the photon is distributed along the arms of the interferometer. Um, uh, if one uses a small uh, interferometer, then the measurement just won't show up. Um, uh, so every, I think, every uh, laser physicist who has done a line width measurement uh, using a mad sender interferometer has uh, a very good, almost intuitive understanding of the non-locality of the photon. Is it possible to improve on the existing quantum mechanics? Yes, it is. And I think um, as suggested by uh, Max Born uh, in, in, in 1949, most likely that in will be indeterministic. Uh, uh, one uh, can, for instance, uh, right now, as um, described in quantum entanglement second edition, uh, go uh, um, further and further down in the improvement of the detail. Uh, 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 and for instance, one can uh, design uh, and slit interferometers down to the uh, in the nanometer uh, um, range. Uh, one can design, for instance, a working uh, um, uh, end slit interferometer with dimensions uh, 10 to 15 uh, nanometers. 
uh, the attempts to bring uh, uh, the deterministic concepts uh, to improve in quantum to improve on quantum uh, mechanics. I think they are very uh, misguided. Fundamentals of quantum entanglement, second edition, also emphasize quantum interference as a very fundamental phenomenon. What is more fundamental, quantum entanglement or quantum interference? Uh, in the second edition of um, of quantum of fundamentals of quantum uh, uh, entanglement, this um, uh, con this concept is is uh, discussed in 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 detail um, as uh, pointed out in the first edition and also in quantum entanglement engineering and applications um, one can go in a very transparent um, mathematical uh, manner from quantum interference to quantum entanglement and um, uh, since the equations in quantum mechanics are reversible, one can also go from quantum entanglement to quantum interference. However, the, the, uh, uh, the process of going from quantum entanglement to quantum interference requires some extra mathematics, which tends to suggest to me that perhaps quantum interference is the most fundamental of the two concepts, although the two concepts are uh, connected uh, intrinsically at a very fundamental level in quantum mechanics. Um, to uh, uh, conclude, to summarize, I would like to say that uh, fundamentals um, uh, of quantum entanglement explains quantum entanglement uh, free of paradoxes, uh, free of mysteries, and it is a, uh, a transparent um, uh, and beautiful mathematical exposition of the subject. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Dr. Duarte, for being with us today and talking about your book, Fundamentals of Quantum Entanglement, Second Edition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah.